Hello and welcome to Arise News. It's Monday the 20th February. I'm Hafsa Tushinkafi in Nigeria's capital Abuja. This is Arise News Now. Our top stories this hour. The offensive on western Mosul takes shape as Iraqi forces recapture surrounding villages. A reward of $100,000 is on offer for uh, the arrest of those behind the bombing in Mogadishu, which killed at least 34 people. A boost for Nigerian cinema. The success of the wedding party seems more, seems more big budget films in the works. We begin today in Iraq, where government forces are making progress in their assault on the so-called Islamic State in western Mosul. The army has seized several of the surrounding villages from the militants. The progress has taken them close to the city's airport. The United States is providing support as hundreds of military vehicles backed from the air roll towards Islamic State positions. To Syria, where rebels say government attacks are putting the current ceasefire in jeopardy. The group's warning they may respond to the recent bombings around Damascus, Homs, and the South. Bombings the rebels describe as a bloody message from President Bashar al-Assad. In just a few days, UN-sponsored talks are due to be held in Geneva. But the envoy to Syria, Stefan de Mistura, has played down the talks, saying the aim is to see if it's possible to start a political process. Somali's newly elected president, Mohammed Abdullahi Mohammed, has offered a $100,000 reward to anybody who supplies information leading to the capture of those responsible for a car bomb blast. At least 34 people have been killed and around 50 injured in the attack in the Somali capital of Mogadishu. Shops and stalls were destroyed in the blast, the first major attack in the capital since the election of President Mohammed earlier this month. No group has yet claimed responsibility, but Al-Shabaab but Al militants are considered the prime suspects. In Ecuador, the ruling party are slightly ahead in the country's presidential elections. Partial results shows leftist candidate Lenin Moreno in, is in the lead, but he may still face a runoff with 60% of the vote counted. Moreno has 38%, while conservative Guillermo Lasso is on 30%. More than 40% is needed to avoid facing a runoff. Thousands of Romanians have once again filled the streets demanding the resignation of the country's government. The protesters use their mobile phones to light up the sky with flashes. Their, their angry politicians attempted to pass a law weakening anti-corruption rules. There have been weeks of protests and biggest demonstrations since the end of communism in 1989. Despite this, the Prime Minister remains defiant. People continue to protest because they don't trust politicians and because of governments and lawmakers' lack of seriousness. Even if the decree which drew people out on the streets in the first place was formally obligated, it still lingers in the Parliament without any final decision being made about it. In Venezuela, the President Nicolas Maduro is warning his U.S. counterpart not to meddle in the country's affairs. Maduro is concerned Donald Trump is being lobbied to force a change of government in Venezuela. President Donald Trump, you are being paid million-dollar amounts in corridors and offices from the White House, the State Department and the Treasury Department from the lobbyists to entangle you and lead you to an incorrect policy of aggression against Venezuela. Open your eyes. U.S. President Donald Trump has defended a remark he made at weekend rally that invited widespread ridicule. He referred to the incident in Sweden as he listed European countries that had been hit by terrorist attacks. With nothing reported in Sweden on Friday, the country asked the U.S. administration for an explanation. Trump tweeted he had been referring to a TV report saying my statement as to what's happening in Sweden was in reference to a story that was broadcast by Fox News concerning immigrants and Sweden. This was not only comment to ignite controversy over the past week. Last week, the U.S. president's words triggered a series of debates. 
you look at what's happening last night in Sweden, Sweden, who would believe this? Sweden, they took in large numbers. They're having problems like they never thought possible. The press has become so dishonest that if we don't talk about it, we are doing a tremendous disservice to the American people. Tremendous disservice. So I'm looking at two state and one state, and I like the one that both parties like. <laughs> I'm very happy with the one that both parties like. I can live with either one. I think it's very, very unfair what's happened to General Flynn, the way he was treated, and the documents and papers that were illegally, I stress that, illegally leaked. Very, very unfair. Russia is fake news. Russia, this is fake news put out by the media. I inherited a mess. France's far-right leader is calling for closer ties with Lebanon during her visit to the country. Marine Le Pen is set to meet Lebanon's president today in what will be her first official one-on-one -on -one talks with the head of state. The meeting is designed to add to her international credibility. Le Pen is currently leading polls for the first round of the French election on April 23rd. I am extremely attached to this precious link between France and Lebanon, which has slightly loosened a few years ago, and which I intend to reconsolidate, and to which I hope to give a future through not only the strong revival of the French language and culture, but also through the development of economic ties between our countries, as we are not just attached by our cultural ties, but also the economic development. Time for a short break now, plenty more to come including business news and do tune in later this week for an Arise Oscar special as our team in Los Angeles bring you frills and spills from the most pre prestigious award ceremony. Thinking of banking in Africa? Then think Zenith, one of the biggest in Nigeria, with assets over $16 billion, listed among the 20 most influential brands in the world and winner of Best Bank in Corporate Governance, the most customer-focused bank in Nigeria, a success built on three foundations dedicated to people, technology, service. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. There is nothing as symbolic as a door. It shuts to protect you and opens to give you much more. Everyone wants to succeed, not just count pennies. When life gets tough, I remember a few things, difficulty and struggles, a part of what life brings. Your strength comes from the support around you. A true friend believes in what you do, there to hold your hand through any weather. I found my partner, and we walk through doors together. Diamond, your bank. Welcome back to Arise News Now, coming to you live from Nigeria's capital, Abuja. I'm Hafsa Tushinkafi. The European Union has committed 70 million euros to help Nigeria end polio and other immunization programs. Another 190 million euros has been ple pledged in the coming months, but it's hardly enough to combat the multitude of challenges within Nigeria's health sector. Arise News anchor Jeff Koinange spoke to the EU's ambassador to Nigeria, Michael Arion, about